All right, welcome to another edition of Weather and Climate Chat with Monsoon Mike Regensberger and Dr. Michael Davis. Dr. Davis, welcome back. Thanks for having me once again. Yeah, I'm going to come right out and say that we're recording this on Thursday because uh, I I couldn't record it on Friday due to a a prior uh, family event. Um, and I'm going to publicize it as, uh, you know, we'll, we'll air it on KUR on Friday, but I'm going to make it available via podcast later today. Why not? Because it's going to be such a, I don't want to use the word historic because it's not like it's never happened before, but it's definitely going to be an unusual weekend that we've got coming up, um, with, uh, and it just seems to be the pattern, you know, is it, I guess it's just that El Nino, uh, pattern that, that we're in. Um, we've averaged above normal past couple months and it looks like it's this weekend's going to, you know, top that off with a little, you know, little icing on the cake temperatures in the sixties. It looks like for the next several days. Yeah. yeah. It looks like upper fifties tomorrow and then Saturday, Sunday, maybe even to Monday, we're looking at sixties, maybe even a mid sixty. You and I have always had a lot of fun with, <clears throat> um, you know, compared choosing temperatures and seeing who's the closest. You got me one time. I got you a, a one time. I, I pulled uh, AccuWeather's high temperatures for the next few days for 19530. That's the Kutztown zip code. I noticed that the Weather Channel and Weather Underground, uh, Underground were exactly the same, and then I remember that's because they're owned by each other. So Correct. they probably get the same information. And the National Weather Service. AccuWeather is saying Friday, which is tomorrow, 60. Weather Channel and Weather Underground, 60, so pretty good consensus there. With National Weather Service going a little cooler, they're saying only 57 tomorrow. Who do you think, uh, who do you think gets tomorrow? I would go with the Weather Service. Okay. I don't think we're going to get to 60 because that's a little early, I think, for the front to be passing through. Right. looks like the front's actually going to We've got a warm front on. coming through, right? Yeah, that's a warm okay. front passing. It looks maybe later in the day, Friday, or in the okay. Saturday. All right. So I'm going to air a little bit cooler. I do think we're going to get in the upper 50s, and we'll definitely flirt with 60, but I'm not quite sure we're going to hit 60 okay. tomorrow. Okay, and I'm going to agree with you there. I think uh, upper 50s is where we top off. Maybe a 58. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll cut cut it down the middle. Say 50, I'll say 58 for tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I'll join you there. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Saturday, uh, some pretty good consensus. Uh, 62 AccuWeather, 62 Weather Channel and Weather Underground, 61 National Weather Service. I mean, they're all pretty much 61, 62. Yeah, and I would say that's about right. Yeah, it's looking about that, and I saw that the uh, high, uh, record high in Reading for uh, Saturday is actually 61. That was set back in 1911. So that should be so probably a, right there. a record. So or, or that, close to yeah. it, yeah. Because I noticed Reading always seems to be a little, like a, temp, a degree or two warmer than Kutztown. So this is mm-hmm. the Kutztown forecast, Reading mm-hmm. probably. You know, and like, then the other major areas around here, like Allentown, Philadelphia, their temperatures are roughly the same. And right. they're like 80 to 100 years old records that could be broken over the weekend with these temperatures in the 60s. Sunday, uh, pretty good consensus on this one, but the National Weather Service a little cooler. AccuWeather 64. Weather Channel and Weather Underground, they're going the most aggressive, 65. Um, National Weather Service 63 for Sunday. So what do you think there? Uh, I'm thinking it's probably going to get in the low 60s. I'm probably thinking like the 63-ish, 64 perhaps. Uh, They're Going to be pretty good winds, I'd say, out of the south. Right. That. So it's going to be helping bring up a lot of um, heat from the south. And the ridges is going to be in place, so it should have uh, ample sunshine. Those ingredients seem to suggest that it's going to be a little bit on the warmer side. I'm going to go with the aggressive uh, weather channel and uh, maybe even do one over it. What, what the heck? I, I've had luck with this before. I'm going to say 66 on Sunday. All right. Be bold. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be bold. Now, uh, the, 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 most, uh, the most variation I'm seeing is what everybody's saying for Monday, and I think that has to do with maybe where, where they're placing the front exactly at that mm-hmm. point. AccuWeather being the most bold with 63, Weather Channel and Weather Underground with 60, Weather Service already down to 58 for Monday. Monday looks like it could be kind of a, I don't want to say a washout, but rounds of showers throughout the day. Yeah, that's all going to yeah. be with the cold front passing through. Right. You have a pretty strong low-pressure system that's going to be moving across the Great Lakes and uh, going pretty much over Michigan and into Ontario on Monday. And the pressure gradient is going to be pretty good there as well. That's so a pretty good wind so Monday. So might have some wind, some rain. Monday's looking like a somewhat miserable day. It right. depends on when the front actually decides to pass. But we could see the 60s 
before the front actually comes through. But it might not feel quite as warm as over the weekend when we have sunshine because we'll have a lot of wind on Monday and yes. also be rainy as well, too. Okay, so what do you think of for Monday? That's kind of a wider variation. I'm going to go a little higher on um, Monday, going to the 60s, probably one of the 62s, 63s. Okay. Because of the strong winds, I do think they'll be out of the south leading in front of the cold front, so it'll help bring up some energy before the colder air decides to come on in. I'm actually going to go opposite of you, which is unusual. I'm going to be a little less aggressive on Monday and say that you know the, the more the more clouds and the, the sh- rain showers will keep it maybe 60, 61 tops. Okay. So, all right. We'll see what happens. It's going to be fun, you know, uh, over the next couple of days. And then beyond that, still, I mean, it, Tuesday is going to get noticeably, I'll use the word noticeably cooler, but still nothing below average. It's, Tuesday, in fact, will still be Tuesday, Wednesday, a good 10 degrees above average. We're yeah, we're looking like... Yeah. 50s or yeah. so for next week, which is still well above average. Any normal weather that you see over the next week or so? I haven't seen any yet. Uh, neither so have I. It looks like we're going to be above average temperature wise, and that pretty much is agreeing with what the Climate Prediction Center had for the beginning of the month, where they right. were showing us in a very likely chance of being above average for December. Now, I hate to have to address this, but we have to because there's other people out there that are throwing these words out there. A couple other uh, people are saying, you know, chances of a Christmas miracle. There was some model the 14 days out that had snow on Christmas Eve. I don't think it's happening. Do you? Uh, not at this point. Yeah. Um, I do think it, with Christmas Day being almost two mon- uh, two weeks two out weeks at away, this point, yeah. it's very unlikely you're going to have any sort of consensus or agreement that's any bit robust in the climate models. And I think going ahead and saying things like there's going to be a winter storm on Christmas Eve is doing nothing but inciting fear and panic. I agree. Yep. uh, I think we need to reserve that for a later day when the models have some time to refine themselves. I really don't think we're going to have that much in the way of snowfall leading up to Christmas Day. I do think we're going to have a not white Christmas. (laughs) I would have to agree with you there. I would say the chances Uh, now are what, about 5%, 10% tops? If that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, We may see a snow flurry, maybe a dusting or so, but... That might be enough to make some people happy. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not going to be making snowmen outside or anything like that. Uh, and this has gone way ahead, but uh, all the the winter fans out there are are, uh, getting pretty, pretty nervous. Any... Posit- positive uh, outlook for uh, more snow and cold in January, or are you not ready to go that far ahead? Uh, I will admit that I haven't looked that far out, right. but I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if we would get some type of snowfall more action. Okay. in January. I do think the colder air will be more entrenched at that point. I do think we'll be having a lot more in the way of undulations in the jet stream, which will be bringing us a chance for more moisture and cold air converging, which will result in more heavy snowfall. But whether you want to go heavy, heavy snowfall, that's, I don't think that's coming. Not happening anytime soon. At least nothing that I can see. Okay. Well, there you have it, folks. So, uh, you know, you know, you're never going to please everybody. The the people that are enjoying saving on on heating bills and and not having to worry about travel, uh, they're very happy. But ski resorts and people that are you know re- like winter weather are not very happy. But you know we'll see where that goes over the coming weeks. I, I do think they'll get their day Eventually. in the sun, yeah. well, day in the snow, or whatever the <laughs> expression maybe, might maybe, be. Maybe won't happen until later January or February, but I think mm-hmm. I think they'll have some some fun yeah. eventually. Uh, one day, yes. Maybe we'll have a white Valentine's Day. Very well. Instead happen. of red, it'll be white. So it sounds good. Okay. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, pretty much summing up the next week right there. Uh, unseasonably uh, mild, perhaps record-breaking this weekend. A little cooler next week, but just you know more in the way of November feeling rather than des- December, I guess you could put it. So temperatures in the 50s. So. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Okay. We're about halfway through. What's our topic of the week, sir? And I have to admit, you, you hit me with this before we started, and I don't know a lot about this. So I'm going to rely on you to educate me. Okay, um, I will preface this by saying that this is a somewhat political issue. That's okay. But I so should think... I run that? The views expressed on KUR <laughs> are not necessarily okay. <laughs> I'll try to keep my uh, Go for outrage it. to a minimum. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm ready. And it outrage doesn't... away. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in my meteorology class, mm-hmm. I was talking um, briefly about the Paris Climate Talks. Yes. And where we were standing on them and... I also brought up the case that one of the 
Senate committees, the Science, Space, and Technology Committee, headed by Lamar Smith, a Republican from Texas, have subpoenaed uh, data from NOAA, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, to essentially analyze it to make sure that they fully reported on an article that was published uh, shortly before the whole climate conference began, which pretty much refuted this idea of a global warming hiatus, Mm -hmm. which um, some people, politicians in general, and a very limited amount of scientists would say is happening, in which case that warming that we're seeing actually slowed down or showed no warming. Hmm. And it, in all actuality, that article actually went back and looked and saw that that warming trend was occurring very rapidly, if not even faster than what you saw in the last half of the 20th century. Right. Now, this subpoena that was issued to Catherine Sullivan, the head of NOAA, essentially was hit with a lot of skepticism by the scientific community about whether this is actually stymieing or intimidating scientific progress by saying, if we don't agree with your science, we are going to subpoena your data. Hmm. And we want to look at that data and make sure that you're using that scientific data correctly because we are the oversight board. And this was hit with a huge backlash from uh, people like the Union of Concerned Scientists, um, trying to think of some other ones, Uh, the National Academy of Sciences, the Advancement of American Sciences, a whole bunch of other people that have been saying we need to stand firm against these attacks on sound science because this is actually seen as trying to use political motives to get Sure. The data that is readily available to the public. You can wow. go to the National Center of Environmental Information, right. click on a few links, and you can find all the data that was used. Right. They want to essentially get that data public, which it is, and also look at internal emails from staffers and people involved at NOAA to see whether they were actually cooking the data. Oh, no, another email scandal. <laughs> exactly. And this is something that w- yeah. came light in Climate Gate when right. Right. it was hacked into personal emails and it was, those emails were taken out of context and morphed into some type of conspiracy theory that right. climate science is actually false and right. you're essentially tricking the world into believing this hoax is real. Right. And it was later seen through multiple... Uh, investigations that the science was indeed sound. So why do they need to get this information from internal emails? It doesn't make sense to me. No, it doesn't. And the argument that the government's making, at least on the Republican side and the committee, is that this was not looking at the satellite data, which the article was looking exclusively at sea surface temperatures based on ship and buoy data. It was not considering satellite data. And that was going to be for another article, which is no standard in science. Don't right. look at one area. Let's look at the other later. And they claim that we don't look at the satellite data, which we've looked at before. Right. And... They also had the idea that this was pushed forward shortly before the climate talks in Paris, and this was helping to promote a liberal agenda for President Obama at this climate conference. We've been publishing these types of stories for months, (laughs) years leading up to the climate talks, and then they decide to attack this one article. Right. And that doesn't make sense to me either. And this was... Just a whole partisan attack, I felt, on science. And that cannot stand if we're trying to make a sound scientific argument to legitimate science progress. Like when you start talking about other sciences, you don't get that critiquing of it, like, say, medical science or even defense uh, science. You don't have 
that skepticism there, yet for some reason there's that skepticism around climate change, wow. which is still somewhat baffling to me to this day. It's so sad that something as as uh, vital as the planet that we live on has turned into such a political issue for political gain, you know, and that's, that's just really sad. Yes, and it... The, another argument that's been made is they want to make sure that the government funds are going toward a non-biased science. And the counter argument would be, is your motives or are your motives unbiased? unbiased? Probably not. <laughs> Especially if these yeah. are getting, if these senders are getting their backing from right. say oil and Absolutely. coal, is there an agenda behind that? Sure. Of course. <laughs> Just follow the money trails, they always say. Yeah, so what's going on? It's this whole stalemate between the NOAA head and the chair of the Senate's Science, Space, and Technology Committee. Wow. Science, Space, and, and technology, technology Committee. From a head that does not believe in climate change. So what do you think happens with this? I think it's just going to be uh, pretty much a stare down between the two, and I do hope that science will actually um, prevail in this case because we are doing independent peer-reviewed studies on the climate and we need to essentially continue that unimpeded from unwarranted attacks on our accreditation. I agree. I can't say I disagree with that. I mean, I don't even really have anything to add to that. I mean, that's just you, you just nailed it right there. Let me ask you this, Dr. Davis, as, as we start to, to wrap up. I mean, the, the news has been just focused the past couple of weeks on, you know, terror and, and, and Muslim issues and all, all this stuff. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a whole lot of press, at least that I've seen, on these, these Paris climate talks and this issue that you're talking about. Is there a good source for this that we can fi- follow along what's going on if we're interested in this? Um, there's a lot of good um, Facebook pages that okay. you look at for social media. There's yeah. also any ones you want to suggest. Any uh, the ones? one I like yeah. exclusively is I Heart Climate Scientists. Okay, I'm going to like that. Great one. Yeah. Yeah, they have a whole bunch of political cartoons that they put up revolving around that. There's also articles that are found in online sources like The Atlantic. Okay. In uh, even Rolling Stone just published one. Okay, good. Uh, I think it was yesterday or today. And you have other resources like The Guardian, Huffington Post, that are publishing more of these climate talk discussions now that we're in the Paris Climate Talks, and it'll be wrapping up uh, this week. Okay. So hopefully we have some type of plan in in place by then. But then there's talk that some countries are starting to waver on their stances because they know that they're not going to be getting a binding agreement globally with all the pushback and undermining that the Republican Congress is instituting on the uh, President Obama. Right. Okay. Well, you gave us some good good sites there to follow along. I'll, I'll be making sure that I have all those liked because, I mean, you can't really, not to do any uh, corporate media bashing, but you can't rely on MSNBC or Fox or CNN to tell us much about this. I've, mm-hmm. I've not seen them talk about these at all. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah. They try to essentially publish more about What's going on, uh, I think, more in a um, more national aspect right. rather than looking at something that is happening outside the U.S. Right. And while those impacts are going to be felt in the U.S., they probably are already sure. right now, it seems that the terrorism and other facets like the political election coming right. up are dominating the talk rather than a global issue like climate change. Because people are focused on that instead of something that actually is affecting us right now, mm-hmm. climate. Yes. All right. Well, you know, that, that you, you, you behaved very well. I thought I didn't think that was a bad soapbox at all. I thought you were just presenting the facts. All you know, right. <laughs> there was a little bit of opinion there, but I can't, can't disagree with any of it. It's all right there. So, mm-hmm. all right. I appreciate that, Dr. Davis, and we'll be interested to follow where this all goes. Yes, I will keep an eye on it. And I'm sure I'll you will. Up. 
Thank you for educating me because I admit I haven't followed it as much probably as I should have. Okay, so wrapping it up, uh, just a recap of our weather once again. Unseasonably warm over the next, um, I guess we can use, we, can, can we use the word? I'll it, say unseasonably warm. Yeah, it, it's, just one, it's, it's one of those relative things. I mean, because if, if we were 65 degrees in uh, August, he'd be like, oh, this is unseasonable cool. But now 65 in December is unseasonable warm. So maybe just above average temperatures, we'll say. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> 2015 will be a yeah. very warm year A greatly well. above average weekend followed by more above average temperatures next week, although not quite as above average. So maybe we'll go from yes. 20 to 25 above average to about 10 above average. But Correct. Okay, we can agree on that. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, well, you have a safe weekend, Dr. Davis, and uh, we're going to continue these throughout the break. So uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Sounds and good. maybe some guests I hear. You have some guests lined yes, up. Yes, I have a few guests that have good. expressed interest in being on the show. I'll maybe have to twist their arms a couple times to see right. if I can get them on air, but they will be here. We're looking forward to it. All right, Dr. Davis, see you next week.